action just ahead with BYB9. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your special attraction co-main event of the evening. It is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's super middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon, Sonia Dreiling. That's what we call mutual respect at the highest level. Absolutely, and I just saw Sonia fight on the second of December down at the hangar down there in Costa Mesa, where I'm from also. But um, she ended up by losing to Raquel Milner on unanimous decision. So, so we'll see in this one. She can't wait. She can't wait. That was also the problem that Aaron Toy had in the very first fight. She kept waiting. Yes. So, well, let's see if these guys get their timing right and bring it. Worthy of no Benny, Raquel Miller moved from 9-0 to 10-0 yeah. in that fight. So she was up against a very good one. Fighting in BYB, I've spent my entire life holding back the raw, brutal fighting I so love, but was frowned upon to look the part of a well-turned boxer. Sonia said, this allows me the opportunity to grow in a sport that's not clouded with politics and is a clear win-lose decision. You know, and I heard probably one of the best sayings yet, and that is win or learn. Yes. Not win or lose, but win or learn. I thought that's a great statement by a fighter because to me, a loss is nothing more than a learning experience. There's no sin in losing if you learn from it. If the tape's perfect, you can't go and criticize it. If you got some holes in your game, it's time to fix them. Let's see what Dryling has in her bare knuckle debut. Big ball. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome the Trigon, Aaron Tohill. Aaron means Irish. The only woman to be ranked in the top five in boxing and MMA simultaneously. She spent three years training with Buddy McGirt, two-time world title challenger. 76 rounds of professional boxing, as I mentioned. She has spent the last 15 plus years as a boxing coach. Talked to her before tonight, and she said the same thing she, she said to you, Benny and Polly, that she waited too long, and I know Aaron pretty well, and as she walked away, said, good luck, you know, have a great fight, and she gave me the, this look, like she knew something. Yeah. And uh, someone of that experience, knowing that it didn't go how she wanted last time, that look may be a huge statement. We'll find out. And the other thing that she's saying is, you know what? My career's over. I know that. Yes. I'm doing this for fun now. I'm yes. doing this for myself. And I think that's a great attitude. Because she's done it all in boxing. She fought Leila Ali. I did that fight when she fought on the undercard of Kevin McBride against uh, Mike Tyson. And uh, that was the very first WBC Women's Championship fight. It was also IBF and WBC. I mean, that's that's huge. She's fought uh, Frazier. Yep. And so she's fought them all. And then also, you know, to be ranked, like you said, in MMA and in boxing, that is impressive. Big Mo is going to set up our co-main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening. It is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's super middleweight division and is brought to you by Life Science Natural Cleaning Solution. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the red corner. She stands five feet five inches tall, weighing in at 160 pounds. She is making her bare knuckle debut and she fights out of Crossville, Alabama by way of Greeley, Colorado. She stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 165 pounds. She is the only woman in history to be ranked both in the top five as a boxer and an MMA fighter. And she comes to us with a bare knuckle record of zero wins, one loss. And she fights out of Costa Mesa, California, introducing Aaron Tohill. Our referee in charge, Bobby Wambacher. All right, ladies, we've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up if you want. I like that. Aaron Tohill, Sonia Dryling, our co-main event of the evening. 
scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Here we go. She's not going to wait this time, huh? Nope. She wanted to get started right away. Aaron utilizing the clinch early. They're both in, they're both in that tight one. Yep. But you can see that right away, Aaron's more comfortable doing that type plum than Sonia is, because he's a boxer. No question. And a very experienced mixed martial artist. She was 10-3-1 and one in MMA. Has a win over one of the best in the world in Marlos Kunin. You know, you look at the face of Sonia, and there's the interview face, and then there's that face in the ring. Yeah. What a difference. Yeah. She's got a game face on. Hill started with that dirty boxing, utilizing the clinch, as did her opponent. Aaron is nice the bigger, there. stronger fighter. Sonia's going to try to pressure her. But Aaron is a tactician. She was when she was boxing, but I watched her train a lot of her fighters, Paulie and Benny, and she is a tactician. And she works on different combinations with her fighters over and over and over. And you can see how she kind of leans and she's thinking about what she's going to look to put together. And, I, that and I could see where she could be a, a good coach because she speaks slowly, yes, clearly, and gets her point across. Yeah, and all that experience, too. You know, there's plenty to teach. She's been doing this for such a long time. Decades worth of experience. Absolutely. Paulie and I, we were talking about Jason Perillo, one of her first coaches. Sean McCauley. I think now she's realizing her just her height and her jab may be able to control Dre. And she's using that brilliantly because she's mad, you know, and yeah. Sonia's willing to close the space, but she's not able to. Yeah, and then even if they're not all landing, it's it's forcing Sonia to respect the distance. And, the, and there's enough of them landing as she lands a right hand off of that one, too. Eight inch reach advantage, round one in the books. I, I got to give that one to Aaron. Yeah, and it seemed like Sonia could have some success on the inside. She did land a couple of punches. They both did. And so it was something to, some confidence for Sonia to take from that inside work. But once Aaron realized that from the distance, that uh, fighting at a distance would be better, I mean, Sonia has been bamboozled by the jab of Tohill. Even if all, not all the jabs land, she's been forced to respect that distance. And uh, it's, it's, it's allowed Tohill to control the gap. And if I was Sonia, I would attack the body more. Because, you know, at 44, the head's always going to be hard. The body softens up. Yeah. Unless maybe you're in a But you're right. I mean, I'll find out when I hit my 40s right now. <laughs> <laughs> the second time. Second time, let's go. Round number two. She's got the height, she's got the reach. Dryling's going to do her best to get inside and counter that. And these are two-minute rounds, so they have to really, really step it up. Absolutely. Which is the mistake Aaron said she made in the fight against Josette Cotton, which she lost by split decision. But, Paul, you know what Aaron's doing right now? She's fighting long. Yeah, long, long, long. And she started out the fight aggressively, but now she's realized, you know, she realized that about the halfway point of the first round, that this is the way right here. This is the, this is the distance right here. She's smiling, too. Yeah, she's talking, she's to talking to her. To I think her. Sonya yeah. Drayling so told her. you got to move your head. you got to move your head. I think Sonya Drayling told her, you're tired. And, and, and Aaron said, I'm not tired. She keeps firing these jibs. And that's it. I mean, the, uh, unless uh, Draylin can figure out a way to deal with this jab, and the way you deal with the jab is you jab back. I mean, Tonya's not using her own jab at all. And if you don't jab with the jabber, the jabber will just control you. And Tohill is, is, is able, has been able to start controlling this whole fight since she started jabbing. But I think what Sonya's got to do is move laterally. Don't be going back, because that, that plays right into what Aaron's trying to do. Back her up. Yeah. Season so right now. Take a step to the side. Yeah, I mean, she's got to get underneath that jab and fire back her own jab, counter with her own jab. Instead, you see, like you just said, Benny, she went back off that jab. If that jab keeps backing her up, she's never going to get anything done. She's got to get underneath that jab and fire her jab or fire that right hand underneath that jab, like just like she did right there. Final 10 seconds of round number two. 
Much like you said, Benny, Aaron said, I've accomplished more than most fighters ever will. I've done a lot, my career's over. This is just for fun. And you know, she enjoys it, Mike. I yeah. mean, you saw her on her walk, you know, yep. going out there talking. And she's always willing to talk to anybody and everybody, has times for everybody. And um, she's also a big animal advocate. You know, she's got her dog, and she rescues dogs, and she places dogs where they should be. So there's a kind heart to her. And um, again, she, 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 you're talking about a scholarship. She had a scholarship in soccer for Stanford at Stanford University. So she's been an athlete her whole life. She hopes to open an animal sanctuary one day. Yeah, she is an athlete. There's no question about that. Began kickboxing at age 18 under Sean McCauley. At LA Boxing in Costa Mesa. Round three. Can Red Sonia combat the reach advantage of the tactical attack? of Aaron Towhill. You know, it's interesting when they, I've given both. Oh, nice, nice. South cross. Switched over. Turning the yeah. south pole and using that south pole left cross. There she goes again. And these straight punches are just totally confusing Sonia. Sonia drilling. I mean, Sonia drilling has no answer for the straight punches and the reach advantage. And look how that left cross now has now drawn blood from the nose of Sonia drilling. Well, Sonia said she wanted, she was anxious to get in the ring with her so she could learn. And she's learning some things right now. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, this, uh, Sonia, Aaron Tonehill's keeping keep it really simple. This is the experience. The experience it teaches you to, to keep things as simple as you can and, and, and be successful with the simplicities many times. You know, sometimes when you're inexperienced, you try to use all these complicated things. Many times you realize the simplicities get you furthest. And this is what Tohill's been doing, man. Yeah, now she's turning southpaw, but it's been all straight punches. Once she started just using the straight punches, Drayling has been completely ineffective. Utilizing that old kiss technique, keep it simple. I'll say student. Yeah. It's <laughs> exactly what I was going to say, you know? Of course. <laughs> That nose now, you can see her wiping yeah. that blood yeah. from that the was nose. That, that was that big left cross that Toto landed about 30, 40 seconds and, ago. and we saw a similar move from the Orthodox to Southpaw and a landing like that in an earlier fight, Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We saw that too. It was a kryptonite technique. It was, yep, exactly. It was Tony and the kryptonite. Formerly Yukaipa. <laughs> Formerly, now known as. <laughs> Sonia's is not able to reach her. Yeah, nah, not, not at all. There's a replay of that left cross. We were talking about it. Just direct hit. Perfect shot honed down the target. That'll clear, that'll clear your sinuses. Sure will. <laughs> and a bunch of other things. <laughs> Well, there's an instruction they're trying to move around side to side. Which is what both you guys have talked about. It's the only way she's going to have a chance of getting to Aaron Tohill because moving forward is just not going to work. I mean, you just looked at the tail of the tape and you knew mathematically there was a huge advantage in the red corner. And Aaron has used that advantage to the fullest. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many times you get fighters that have that advantage don't use it. Instead, they get inside and yes. want to exchange where you saw Tony Lopez use that six inch reach advantage, now eight inches here. Same thing. They're fighting from the outside, doing the smart thing. You're absolutely right, too, Benny. It's like there's one thing having the reach advantage, there's the other thing utilizing it, fighting long. Turning that shoulder being even longer. 
which is what Aaron did when she switched that southpaw and connected with her best punch of the fight. Round four, two minute rounds. Main event for the belt, still to come. JD Burns and Jose Fernandez, big swing and a miss. You know, Sonia wants to come in this so bad, boy, but she yeah. doesn't know how to get in there. No. Totally. And like I said, it's between the straight punches, simple straight punches, and total, understanding how to use her distance. And Sonia Draylin has just been totally baffled. Simple fight for her until her. Very simple. She's, aside from her hands being sore tomorrow, she's not going to feel like she even got into a fight. Well, you were doing that with Lobo. Same thing, where you were coming right down the pipe with that left. Hey, it was one of the easiest fights I had. <laughs> even I broke a hand. <laughs> but, you know, the judges didn't quite see the same things. <laughs> well, the difference in this fight is that Josette Cotton just threw caution to the wind. Yeah. And she just came in and brawled and brawled and, you know, turned it into a street fight mm -hmm. to say, you know, to put it quite accurately, and that's what got her a very close split decision victory. Tonight, Sonya's just, it, she doesn't have that, that same gear to go to. But I also think Tohill may have learned from that fight. Yeah. You yes. know, she's always, you know, she mentioned that in the interview. She learned from that fight. And, and you know, it, I think once you start to get your bearings in, listen, if, if Drayling had faster feet, she may still be able to get in. Because Tohill, right. despite her jab and her straight punches, still has kind of, Tohill's feet are still kind of slow. So if there were, there were some fast feet there by Drayling, she may be able to get in. But Drayling doesn't have the fast feet. And so she's got to deal with the technique. And she's got to deal with the technique of dealing with the straight punches, and she just doesn't have that technique. And the other thing right now is Aaron is fighting at the location she needs to fight, which is the middle of the ring. Yep. The middle of the ring, and she's not leaving that spot. Yeah, and it's up to Draylin to force yeah. her to leave that spot. And much like you said on my fight with Lobo, but I understood the same thing. It was just keep it center, keep it at center, use those straight shots, and just time them very well. Fifth and final round. Red Sonia's got to do something very special here. As she looks to attack early aggressively. But see that right hand? That fends her off. Yep. yep. And Aaron ties up. And that's smart, too. When you, when you, when she got a low too close, you, you tie her up. And I don't know how much damage Dryling could actually do in the clinch against Aaron. She's so powerful, so big and strong. Throwing that jab out, even just for distance, just to keep her opponent away. Yeah, you can measure a nice right hand there by Toho. And she's working that right hand because she paused that left hand and then boom, straight right hand. But I like Draylin's intensity here in the last round. I like that she's actually going for it. Because like I said, I, I don't feel like Toho's feet are that fast. So you can, if you, if you move in quick enough, you may be able to still force your way inside. Yeah, Sonya could give uh, Aaron the respect the first round, but after that, make it a dirty fight. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Final 40 seconds of our co-main event of the evening. So it would be better, better served too to faint a little bit as well. You can, you can really put Drayling in, into even more frustration if you're fainting in between these nice sharp straight shots you're throwing. Tohill's got to keep that left hand out there. Because now Sonya's starting to close the distance. Clock ticking down, 10 seconds. Our co-main event is gonna go the distance. Dryling did in the fifth what you should have done yeah. in the first, yeah. second, third, and fourth. And again, that's the experience, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. she'll know for next time. But you know, that's the thing. Aaron learned in that first fight. Yeah. And now she applied now, and she learned. She stayed in the middle, used her distance, and wasn't waiting. Yeah, who knows? Maybe she just didn't trust her conditioning to, to be able to go all the rounds if she pushed it too hard too fast. Who knows? Uh, she'll know for next time, for sure. And that may be in a boxing situation about the longest and tallest fighter that Sonya's actually matched up against. I mean, I'm going to guess the fight you saw against Raquel Miller, the, the size difference yeah, no, no, wasn't no, abundant no. like that, right? Both. And not only that, but Raquel wasn't that kind of fighter. I mean, Raquel... Right.
throwing some beauty combinations and, you know, digging the body, all that stuff. This was a very frustrating for fight for Sonya because, yeah. again, she couldn't get past that length of that jab. Yep, yep. And, you know, Aaron was slick enough to work that jab and then come in with that straight right. And that's what cut up her nose and that's what cut up the eye and, you know, did the damage on the face of Sonya. This one will not be difficult for the judges to score. Sonya still fired up. She just went five rounds with, like she said, one of the pioneers of female boxing. Yeah, she's gonna get back to her boxing classes. Yeah. I think she also said I gave her a boxing lesson. <laughs> yeah. Official decision is set. Toehill Dryling going the distance. Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, after five full rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for official decision. Judge Winkapaw scores at 50 to 45, while judges O'Connor and Torres score at 50 to 46. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Aaron Tohill! First win without the gloves on for Aaron Tohill. Winner by unanimous decision. And you know, that's a great strategy she implemented. And she stuck with it, never got away from it. Momentarily there, you know, when all of a sudden Sonya was closing it, even then she made sure to keep that right hand up and then 